Hey guys, what's up? Today we're about to meet the very first JRPG release on every single Sega console. With the exception of the Sega Nomad, because you know, for obvious reasons, it didn't have any games of its own. Also the 32X is not gonna be included because it didn't have any RPGs whatsoever, but all the other Sega consoles had at least one RPG, and today we're gonna meet the very first one. Released in Japan and with localization to North America. Alright? Let's begin! Alright, we're gonna start with the Master System with Miracle Warrior Seal of the Dark Lord. This game was first released for several computer systems until its port to the Master System in 1987. Three months later, it was released in North America, making it the first JRPG to be localized here. Not a launch title, but definitely the first one of its kind. It's a turn-based RPG, a little bit slow and boring to be honest. What little I played left me with no desire to come back, so it isn't something that I can actually recommend. It's got some interesting features like the navigation system and the fact that you can see several screens at a time, but overall it's not something to be excited about. It's an okay RPG, I guess. Decent only for its time. Now for the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive, we've got Phantasy Star 2. Following the success of the first Phantasy Star on the Master System in 1988 outside Japan, the Genesis came out and brought its sequel the next year as the very first JRPG localized in the West. It also became a commercial success, although still being a very hard game to play and navigate, probably now more than its predecessor. First person dungeon crawler was gone, and instead it introduced really long and tedious dungeons without a map. We all know nowadays this game is a total grind fest, but it's still a great game nonetheless. I recently talked about it and also streamed it. There's no need for me to talk about it once again so soon, so let's move on. The Sega City. We've got Lunar the Silver Star. The Sega CD, also known as the Mega CD, was a huge thing when it first came out, and although it focused more on other types of games, exploiting the compact disc features of its time, particularly with the cutscenes, it also had some RPGs on it. Most of them, sadly, were never released outside Japan, but we still got a few. The very first one was Lunar the Silver Star by Game Arts, which would later become a huge classic, remade and ported to several different consoles. It was a charming and traditional turn-based RPG, but with characters fighting at the right side of the screen, sprites looked small but beautiful at the same time, and it had a story full of charisma. The game was brought to North America by Working Designs a year and a half later, after its original release. If it wasn't for them, I'm pretty sure we would never have gotten this amazing version. Moving on to the Sega Saturn with Virtual High Life. Ah, it's sad to see how one of the worst RPGs ever made on a Sega console was the very first one released on the Saturn. The High Life franchise made its debut on the arcade and computer systems in the 80s, but as soon as it was brought to the NES, gamers and critics trashed it. I'll never understand why they decided to remake it for the Sega Saturn, only to fail miserably again. This time it was even worse, I can't believe an action RPG like this exists, with full 3D graphics and a digitized dude that was probably coerced into acting for the main character. This game is horrible and it shouldn't even be acknowledged as an RPG, so if you want something more traditional, feel free to say Mystaria The Realms of Lore is the true first JRPG release outside Japan back in 1996. Can't talk about it since I have never played it. Next up is the Dreamcast, with Evolution The World of Sacred Device. This was the start of a two-part game, as it is technically an RPG caught in half, the World of Sacred Device was the first part and it wasn't exactly successful, but at least it became a cult classic later on, nowadays being more of a hidden gem. 
It's a traditional turn-based RPG with a story that's mainly for kids, so it's kinda ideal for young beginners to take on the world of role-playing games. However, it's not that good in my opinion and I think games like Lunar are more befitting for newcomers to the genre. Evolution is the earliest JRPG on the system that was released outside Japan. I said it wasn't that good, but that doesn't make it bad. It's pretty decent and it's cool to have it as one of the earliest JRPGs in the Dreamcast. Last but not least, the Game Gear. We've got Crystal Warriors. This game is a strategy RPG from the vein of Fire Emblem and Shining Force, but I have never played it. It is the first JRPG released on the Sega's first portable console back in 1991. Before this game, there was Dragon Crystal, released in 1990, but that's just a roguelike with barely any RPG elements on it. Apparently, Crystal Warriors does play like the famous franchise, as I mentioned, just with cute characters and animations, depicting totally the opposite from its horrible North American cover. You're also able to recruit monsters and have them fight by your side. It does look like a game that I would totally like to play someday. What about you? In any case, it is officially the first JRPG made for the console that got a localization outside Japan. That's it guys, as you saw, uh, Sega is kinda dead when it comes to consoles. Uh, they haven't come back in quite a few years, I'd say. Hopefully with the release of the Sega Mini console that's gonna be released uh, later in this year, if it succeeds, maybe, hopefully, we'll see a new Sega console, a new Sega proper console one day. I know it's much to hope for, but you know, we can dream, right? Anyway. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!